Welcome back to another episode of the Sport of Luxury. I'm your host, Darius Holly, and I have a very special guest with me today. Now, when I knew I wanted to have some art talk on this show, there was no one I'd rather debut that conversation with. I'm here with Melanie Liriano, but I call her Mills. Mills is an art collector and a gallerist, so we're going to be diving into that and some. Mills, what's up? What up, D? Happy to be here. Of Thank course. you so much for having me. Of course, of course. I'm glad you're here. Um, I think it's only right that we start off with a toast to, you know, start the show off. Listen, happy to have you here. I'm glad you were able to come. Thank you. Thank of you to have. Thank you for having me. Mm-hmm. So look, diving right into it. Talk to me about what it was like coming up as a youngin for you, uh, artistically. You know, like what what was some of your childhood creative outlets and inspirations? Um, so growing up, I grew up in Dominican Republic. I moved to New Jersey afterwards, and then I think my adulthood was in Miami. Um, but I have always been an artist per se. I think everyone is an artist, so I always use quotation marks when you know I describe myself as one um, because I think everyone has their own artistic capabilities. Um, but growing up, I was just, you know, very creative. I loved music. Music was like my first love. Um, my mom, my father, they're heavy into music. So I grew up dancing with my parents, listening to bachata, merengue. And my dad like really liked like old school disco. Mm-hmm. So I would watch the videos and, and like see what everybody was wearing. And I was just infatuated with like the fashion aspect of like an artist, you know. Yeah. And so um, I would dress like the videos and my parents used to record me. And I was like just heavy, heavy, heavy into like music. But I always see like music, fashion and art as one as a whole, just because I think you know, it just has little aspects that every artist that paints, every musician that sings, and every creative, you know, just has that in them. Yeah. So for as a kid, like, that's all I did. I, I recorded home videos of, like, just with a guitar and stuff. I never did actual art. I used to, like, draw. Mm-hmm. Um, I was, like, always the tomboy, so I always played with my brother with, like, I never had, like, Kens and, yeah. and Barbies. I, I say Ken's first, but um, <laughs> I never had Barbies. I, I would always play, like, with action figures with my brother. Yeah. And I remember when I was a child, I would, like, draw them. Like, mm. after my brother and I would play, I would just sit down and, like, draw, like, what we would play, the, the actual action figures we would play with. Mm. And I would always, like, put clothes on them. And that was, like, my first, like, vivid dream as yeah. a kid, like, being re- relating to art. Nice. Yeah. Nice. So, I mean, okay, so diving into, you know, with the fashion aspect of, of, of art, what were some of your favorite brands, like, like coming up? Oh, um, I think when I really started noticing fashion, at the time there was a brand called Triple Five Soul. And mm. it was, I don't know if it, they were New York-based, but I remember them, like, just a name like Triple Five Soul. I was like, man, it has like three numbers Triple and it, it says soul. soul. Yeah. Like that means like they mean something. I think I have like an obsessive personality. <laughs> so whenever I like something, I like dive in. Yeah. So I remember like looking up that brand and then that brand led me into other brands like LRG, Rockerwear, mm-hmm. Pepe Jeans was like a big thing. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, brands like that, I was like obsessed. I remember when Lot 29 was like a huge thing too. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I grew up like in those type of brands, like street streetwear brands yeah. at that time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. This That was prominent, you know what I'm saying, in my, in my childhood as well. You know, my parents kind of kept me in all that type of stuff. Uh, and I didn't know about everything at the time, but my parents was, like, heavy into fashion, so they just kept me in all the latest streetwear and stuff. So I could definitely relate in that aspect, you know. But, um, okay, cool. No, no, I, I love that. I love that. So, but when we're talking about, like, okay, like, on the art side, you said you used to draw, like, the figures and stuff. Like, what was, can you remember any of the ones specifically? Like, like cartoons or? or yeah, um, there was a cartoon show. I forgot the name of it, and I, I wish I would talk to my brother about this. Next time <laughs> I talk to him, I'm going to definitely ask him. Yeah. But they were, like, sharks. I don't know if you ever, I mean, I'm, I'm a little bit older than you, but um, they were sharks, and they, they just, they were sharks with clothes. They were, mm. like, sharks that were humans, and they were actual humans in the show as well. 
and they had clothes. So I remember one of the sharks was like a rocker and he had like long hair. Uh, and then yeah. um, the other ones were like, there was one that was like really tailored and had like a suit on. And so I used to draw them. Mm. And I that was like my first introduction to like drawings, like figures with actual clothing on. And yeah. then from there, I just kept it going. When I would like watch music videos, I would also just like draw little like, at the time, I was really obsessed with Dipset, okay. and to me, I'm, I'm still obsessed with Dipset, <laughs> um, but they, I think, were like very New York streetwear, yeah. and um, I would like draw stuff that, you know, I see them wearing, and, and then I would sketch things that I would want to wear. Because, you know, I was a girl. My mom always wanted to dress me like a girl. Mm. And she would be like, hey, um, let's go to the mall. And like, you could pick out whatever you want. As long as you pick out dresses and short shorts and this and that. And I'm like, I don't want that, you know? Yeah, yeah. And so it led me to, like, what do I want to dress like? So I would, like, just draw it, you know? Yeah. Um, and, yeah. So, yeah, that, that was pretty much it. So, no, no. So, so now that you mentioned that, now I kind of want to know, like, what were some of the, uh, the the pieces you were sketching, like, uh, on the, with clothes, you know? Um, it would be, like, jeans, shirts, okay. things like that. Like, with know? designs on them, though? Like, what kind of, like, designs would you... Um, I, I want to say, like, what keeps coming back to me right now is uh, the Dipset Anthem video when they're wearing, like, all bandanas. Yeah, I used yeah, to yeah. draw jeans and then put, like, bandana patches on them and things like that. And, like... At the time, where like forces were like super, like everybody yeah. was customizing them. <laughs> I would draw what I want my forces to look like, you know. Um, so things like that, nothing like crazy. It was mm. everything that I drew was fashion yeah. oriented. It was it. I never saw myself as like, man, this could be a thing for me. Right. I just saw it as like, this is what I want to wear, and I'm not allowed to wear it. Um, but like this is what it would be like if I would to dress like this, you know what I mean? Yeah. Or the pieces that I wish I had. So did you? Was you ever on Nike? Uh, was it Nike ID? Or you? you uh, Nike like, ID, yeah. You could, uh, and and at the time, I think Tumblr was also like a big thing. So I used to like draw and and everything that I put on, mm-hmm. um, I would put it on Tumblr. Word. So fast forward. Um, so at, at what age would you say you you got into different mediums of art outside of fashion? Um. I want to say probably just recently. Okay. And by just recently, I mean like maybe in the last 10 years. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Just Miami has such a big art scene. And I remember uh, Art Basel back in the day um, when Wynwood wasn't a thing. Um, and there was actually art galleries in Wynwood. Um, I used to just walk around the streets and go into galleries and just be like, man, like this feels like home to me. You know, like mm. this feels like... Like, I want to be a part of this, you know? And I just saw, like, my childhood in a different way yeah. um, expressed in art. And, uh, yeah, I would say maybe, like, I mean, I, I lose track of time of how old I am because I feel so young at heart. So maybe, like, 20 years ago. Mm. Um, but, yeah, I was just going to galleries, you know? Yeah. I was, uh, I was also, um, at the time when I was going to these galleries, Um, I would always have a camera on me. This was before, like, Instagram, and I used to just walk around with a camera, and I used to take pictures of everything that I saw when there was this thing called Art Walk that it was every second Saturday, all of the galleries would open up in Mm -hmm. Wynwood. You know, now Wynwood is, like, just stores, but back in the day, it was just art galleries. So every second Saturday, there would be something going on, and all of these galleries would open up and I used to just take my camera and like take street style pics, Mm -hmm. but then also take uh, pictures of the gallery and um, the art that was in the gallery. So because I was walking around with my camera and all of like the people that I was walking with were like, you know, artistic kids and super like weird, you know, everyone was always gravitated to like us. And, you know, then I started like just getting to know the owners of the gallery, artists and, it's kind of how it happened. Building the network. Yeah, Building just grew the network. the network just based on, like, taking pictures. No, that's... So So photography also played a big part in just your development as a as an artist as well. Yeah, for like, sure. I, I think I hit, like, every 
little corner yeah. that has yeah, to do yeah. with <laughs> anything creative. I wanted to be a part of it. Um, but I, I've always loved photography. I've always, like, um, just admired, like, capturing people in, like, their essence. Mm -hmm. you, still, you still dabble in photography now? I know? do in yeah. a sense of, like, with my phone, you yeah, know? Okay. Yeah, yeah, no, um, yeah. I love to travel, so anytime I travel, I like taking pictures of, like, random things, like... For sure. You know, so... Yeah. So, speaking of traveling, you definitely are an avid traveler. Um, so tell me how did that be how that began for you? Um, from a young age, I would go to the Dominican Republic every summer. My parents were like, that was the only place that we traveled to. Mm -hmm. So I remember like that rush on getting on a plane. And anytime like you're on a plane to Dominican Republic, back in the day, not so much now, which I'm a little upset about. <laughs> but when the plane used to land, everyone clapped. Like, yeah. damn, we made it home. And that was like a thing, a vivid thing when I um, was a child. So I, as I grew older and I, I, and I was like, you know, I can afford to travel now, um, I want to feel that like in my gut, like just yeah. that clap of like, I made it somewhere, you yeah. know? And that rush of like being on a plane and you don't know what you're getting into. Right. Um, so I want to say like in my early 20s, I started just traveling. Mm. I would tell myself like, um, you know, I wasn't making that much money at the time. So I was like, man, you know what? I'm not going to go to that restaurant. I'm not going to go to that thing that everybody's doing. Like, yeah. I'd rather do that in another state. Gotcha. I'd rather do that in another country, yeah. you know? And so then I was like, I want to just have my passport. I want that to be like a hobby of mine, you know? Do you remember your first like place that you went to or the first uh, passport stamp outside of like, or as an adult when you started outside traveling on your own? Your, um, damn, that's a good question. I don't. You've been so many places. I know. I'm like, I can't. I can't remember. <laughs> yeah. But I'll tell you one of my favorite. Oh, yeah. And still Talk to, to this day is, is Guatemala. Yeah. Um, Guatemala, like, plays a huge part of my heart. I just love um, Lake Atitlan. It's, it, um, it's basically a lake that has, seven, I want to say, it's seven surrounding islands around it. And mm. each island is just so different. And it's you can take a little boat. It's super inexpensive. It's so rich in culture. Nice. And yeah, that's that's my, my favorite. And I, I visited there a few years back. And then I just recently went, um, I want to say like a year ago. All right. So do you have, you have any idea how many countries you've been to now at this point? If you could put a number on it or a ballpark number. I, I, it's funny because I try to like sit down and be like, but then I'm always like, man, I forgot. I forgot <laughs> this one. I forgot that one. What, yeah. But I don't know, maybe like uh, 30. Well traveled, well traveled for sure. Yeah. Or I don't know, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And lost count. I, 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 it's funny because our last uh, trip, I was telling my partner like, babe, Look at my passport, yeah. you know, like it's getting yeah. cool and like, I just love it. It's just, you know, you feel like it's it's a chance to re-identify mm -hmm. with who you are because it's just you and your person or just you. Mm -hmm. um, I I haven't taken, I, I've taken like girls trips and, and partner trips, but I've never taken a solo trip. Mm -hmm. um, so that's something that I really want to do this year. Okay. Um, but yeah, traveling is like, is, is, like the hobby of mine. Again, no. I'm obsessive, so <laughs> I like to research before I'm going somewhere. And yeah, I just like to reinvent myself every time I travel. Nice, I love that. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, so speaking on, of course, with, on, on traveling, you know, how has traveling inspired your artistic vision? You know, from seeing different works when you're out or just talking to different curators from other countries and cultures? Um, Great question. Um, I think I learn more every time I travel uh, because, again, my partner and I share that. We love traveling and we love art. Um, she has widened my um, eyes to the type of art that she likes. Mm. And so then like we bounce off ideas off of each other. And um, it's funny because there may be some things that I didn't like initially and then I like remember or I look back on a photo that I took and I'm like man like that was actually really good you know yeah. um 
but yeah, it's it's different. I think it just widens my mind to like like different things. I, I, I in the beginning I was just stuck on like one type of um, art or like. Ellie likes to call it uh, pop art, and mm. I'm like, I don't like pop art. What do you mean? <laughs> like everybody likes that. <laughs> so yeah. um, I think uh, the more I travel, the more I learn about different cultures, and mm. the more I learn about different textiles, different mm. types of art. Um, so everything just kind of widens when I do. Um, I wouldn't say I like a specific type of art now. I think I just like something that looks good. Yeah, you know. <laughs> so. Basquiat. Talk to me about Basquiat. How how his uh, his impact on the culture and just his artwork in general uh, impacted you? Um, well, I have a huge Basquiat crown on my on my back, <laughs> yeah. which is funny because I recently have been like, man, I really want to get that covered up, mm. um, just because he's been such an imp- impact on the culture. But I think people just like think that that's just what art is. I think. Um, even the artists that I represent now or um, my close friends, when I see them using a crown on their art pieces, I'm always mm-hmm. like, no, yeah, you yeah, know, like, yeah. um, like do something that like outside of the box, like let that be him, you know? Mm-hmm. And I think everyone like admires him now. So when something like some, when something or someone that everyone is like, focused on i'm like okay i want to move past that so gotcha. um r.i.p basquiat i sure. adore him but i also am like oh, come on people like, <laughs> learn about other types of art right. you know or yeah. learn about other artists um although he was great and i think as a person i resonate a lot with who he was as a person you know i study him a lot because he was like and is one of like the artists that everyone knows that is into the same things that we're into as far as like growing up black and brown because he is black and brown growing up like in the street culture Mm -hmm. um doing graffiti these are all things that we grew up with so i think that's why we resonate with basquiat and why he's such a big name yeah and i will never take that from him so that just proved why i should keep this crown (laughs) (laughs) 100 percent. okay so so let's talk about, you know, all the, the wisdom you, you've gained, all the, the traveling you've done, you know, and just the passion experience. So you're putting that all together and, you know, you put together your first, your first art showcase. Talk to me about that. You know, when was this and who, what, what artists did you feature? Oh, man, great question. Um, that's a really good question because, like, I don't <laughs> remember. Oh, I actually I do. My boy Sway. Okay. Shouts to Sway, my brother. <laughs> Um, Sway was actually the first person that I, that I showcased and, um, you know, that's, that's my guy. Mm -hmm. Um, and I had an opportunity, my nine to five is in Wynwood. So, um, I was like, man, why don't they have art in here? Um, I really don't think that Wynwood should just be stores. Like it should just go back to the art, uh, galleries. It should like have some sort of gap of galleries left in Winwood and mm. the ones that are left are not that good. Yeah. So I'm like, ah. you know, <laughs> I work in Winwood. I have bare walls around me. Um, let me just ask corporate if I can like just throw art shows here. Yeah. Um, because, you know, we're in Winwood. We should have art. You <laughs> it's know? only right. You know? um, yeah. So Sway was actually the first artist that, that I was like, I believed in. And I was like, yo, like, you want to do an art show together? And yeah, he's he's the one I started with. Nice. So from that experience, more travel and more art digestion, talk about your latest showcase and who that featured. Uh, latest showcase with Papu, Selena. She's such an amazing artist, which I am happy t- and proud to say that I will now start representing her. Congratulations. Um, thank you so much. Uh, this one came about, I actually took a break because outside of doing my art shows at Elisteva, I wanted to just stop, you know, and I wanted to uh, pivot and do art shows elsewhere because, mm. you know, I just wanted to, you yeah, know, grow yeah. and switch the vibe. Um, so I stopped doing it for a whole year and while I was doing art shows in other places. And then um, a lot of things changed in my life and I wanted to bring it back home where um, where it started. Mm. And uh, 
it was during Basel, and I remember just kind of like searching, searching. Um, typically, when I do bring an artist, is either a friend, uh, someone that I admire their work, or it's honestly just scrolling through Instagram or like a connection that I've made. Mm. And in this case with Papu, um, I was scrolling through Instagram and I was just like trying to find some sort of inspiration. And then I came across her work and I was immediately like drawn in and I thought she was amazing. I thought the way she represented herself online was dope. So I just DM'd her and I was like, yo, you want to do a show? And she was all for it. Um, then I had some homies that DJed that uh, were going to back to their homeland. And they were like, you know, we want to do this with you. Um, and we want to also say, like, do this party as a goodbye mm. to Miami. Um, and it was just such a great turnout. Um, the art is still up at El Estiva if anybody wants to take a look at it. Um, <laughs> go check but, it out. Yeah, go check it out. It's it's um, it's it's beautiful to connect with people online um and it's also beautiful to grow relationships with these artists uh because they become my friends they become my allies and um in this case like you know i really believe in her work i know it's taking her really far and i'm excited for the journey that i have ahead of me um because you know she's she's a great artist and um yeah that was the last show really proud of it it's probably the biggest turnout i've had nice. um so yeah oh well, congratulations on that again and congratulations on um you know managing you know this amazing artist you guys are gonna do amazing things and i can't wait to see what's to come thank you so much so switching gears a bit you know so as you guys can see if you can't tell already you know by her style and her aesthetic you know mills is definitely a muse <laughs> so talk to me about this piece that was made of you by candy lopez Oh, Candy Lopez. Um, she is such a talented artist. And I think that now seeing how much she's developed and how much that piece of me has traveled <laughs> has been so amazing. Um, she is funny because it goes it ties back to Instagram. There's this guy that I follow that is uh, just heavy into fashion. And um, he posted one day this like yard yarn work that someone did of him. And I was like, whoa, that's dope. You know, so yeah. I clicked on the artist and it was Candy. And I was like, wow, man, she's <laughs> like so creative. And she's like, so like, yeah, I, I hadn't seen art like that before. So I was like astonished that she knew someone that I followed on that is on a completely different side of the world. And she saw him in the same way that I did because I mm. thought he was flying. So did she, that's why she made the piece. Mm. Um, and then, like I said, obsessive personality. So when I like something, I research and I saw that she was from Miami and I was like, what? She's here, you know? Mm. So I followed her and then I saw that she was doing a show. Um, during that show, I was managing Julian and um, I wanted to introduce them just because I wanted him to be around more artists. And I got to meet her and she got, you know, to be a friend and she asked me, one day, just randomly after I met her, I want to say like a month later, she contacted me and said, hey, I'm going to do this project. I would really want you to be a part of it. And it was it was great. You know, like I, I it's it's funny to like get texts and be like, oh, I just saw you in the museum and yeah. somewhere in Austin, you know, yeah. or somewhere in New York, you know, and she's made two pieces of me now. So it was also like really dope to like walk into a museum and you see like you yeah, in a museum. Yeah. So it's kind of funny. Yeah. Um, but she's so talented. She's a fellow Dominicana. So I'm always an advocate for my peeps. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah, it's it's beautiful to see how much her career is, is skyrocketing right now. Absolutely. No, the piece is amazing. Um, I think it's, you know, it's only right. I mean, you know, it's Mills. Mills is, you know, a great candidate for, you know, a project like that. So, you know, again, so with all of this, you know, I think that it's, it's amazing, you know, what is your, your journey has taken you. Um, and recently you have had the chance to pay it forward, you know, uh, and help foster the talents of young artists. You know, you were invited to be on a panel of judges at the Young at Art Museum for the Scholastic Art and Writing Awards. 
How was that experience and what kind of art was showcased? Oh, man. Um, so these are kids from all over the world in different counties that submit their work and um, just for scholarships and they compete like Broward County competes with other counties. Um, so you got artists from New York, from California. So it was a pleasure to be able to, to judge on that um, just because I feel like my career is just starting in art. Um, so just to like be invited to that was like a really like, man, I'm on the right yeah. path, you know? Um, the categories that I uh, actually judged were fashion, jewelry, and mixed media art. Um, and it was just so amazing because young me was like, man, like, mm. you know, I remember when I was a kid and I was <laughs> doing this, but they, I mean, some of these designs, I was like, yo, I would rock that. I love the way they styled it. They uh, photographed it. Um, and it's just beautiful, you know. I saw work that I'm like, oh, I can't wait to like yeah. reach out to this artist to like showcase them, you know. And these are kids, and um, it's just so dope to see kids on the come up, and you know, and like the where where their minds are, you know what I mean. A lot of a lot of like different like uh, tones, and like you can see different personalities in, in these kids, and it was just such a good experience to start my year with. Um, yeah. So I'm excited to continue to to do things like that, you know? Oh yeah, no, that's amazing. That's like, so it's, it's, like I said, it's cool to kind of like be able to do that. And like you said, you can just channel back your younger self and just kind of like put yourself in their shoes. And it's just, you, you just know that um, they got so much more room to grow. You know, they can blossom into so much, especially with the the talent they have right now. You know, it's just, you know, the sky's the limit for them. So, I, you know, I'm sure you're happy for them. And um, and I'm happy for you. Like I said, being in a position to do that is, is amazing. So congrats on that as well. Thank you so much. Yeah, I hope to to reach out to a few of them, see if we can do an art show. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's only right. So um, let's switch gears again into some more fashion. We're going to go into the art of fashion. So, you know, I know you're into high fashion, do you believe that some garments are wearable art? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> I always say, like, you know, the reason why something costs so much is because it is a form of art. You know, if something is well made and um, luxury fashion as well, like, you know, you can always resell it. It's, it always yeah. has a value to right. it, just like art, you know? So, strong advocate of that. <laughs> That's why I also think that when people are stylists, when you know, people just get fly. You're an artist because you're painting your canvas every time you get up and leave the door. So mm. um, for me, it's an absolute hell yes. <laughs> <laughs> well said. Well said. So what would you say are some of your favorite brands that you believe do a good job at creating these timeless pieces that's, that hold value? Oh, wow. Great question. Um, Ralph Lauren all the way. Uh, Polo is like timeless. Um I think my style changes every so often, um, but right now I'm very much into like low key, although I'm like high key today. <laughs> um, uh, but right now, uh, Polo would always be like the top classic for me, but I think Margiela, um, I'm really into La Mer right now. It's like one of my favorite brands right now. Um, I also really love Our Legacy. I recently went to their store in Berlin and I was like, I'm a huge fan. That's mm. why I'm wearing your mules today. Word. <laughs> um, Word. But yeah, our legacy, I think it's classic. It's timeless. You don't know what it is. And if you know, you know, type of vibe. Le Mer, same thing. To me, the top brand all time, Margiela. Okay. Um, so yeah, those are it. Margiela and Ralph are like top two. Top two. Yeah. Neck and neck. Neck and neck. Word. So what would you say? Who, who are some of your uh, fashion influences right now? Mm. Um. That's a good question. Or all time, just not even right now, just of all time. I really like Nick Wooster. Okay. You know, I feel like that's gonna be me when I'm his age. <laughs> um, <laughs> I love the way he gets fly, um, and he's just some like old white man, but he does it right. So Nick yeah. Wooster is like my. He's always been like my, ooh, I want to dress like that when I'm older. Yeah. Or, ooh, I want to like replicate that outfit. That's my guy. Right. <laughs> Shout out to Nick Wooster. So speaking of influence, I want to talk a bit about music before we wrap up. So there's two artists that I want to ask you about. So first, 
Amy Winehouse. Mm. Talk to me about the impact that Amy Winehouse has had on you. Oh, man. D, I like that you went researching. You know, I, I, you know, I do my due diligence, you know? <laughs> um, Amy is my, like, you know, when people always ask you, like, oh, who's your favorite artist? Amy's, like, the top of it. Like, I think when I first listened to her music, I was just like, well, who is that? You know, and everybody was just like, uh, like, it's so jazzy. And at the time when she released um, Rehab, uh, everybody thought that it was just like a pop hit. But again, going back to my obsessive personality, um, I did research and I was like, uh-uh, this is like her trashiest song. Like, mm. She just hits my soul in ways that like no artist has. Um, you know, when even when I talk about it, and, I, and it's crazy because this is somebody I do not know, but I feel has made such an impact in my life through dark times, through good times, you know? So I think when an artist is that good, they impact someone that much. Yeah. So Amy is like my, like, you know, mm -hmm. my Sunday morning, my Friday nights, you yeah. know? Like, <laughs> yeah. she's just like, she's that bitch. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. So yeah, definitely, you know, RP to Amy and, uh, and her voice, her voice was just truly special, you know, so I could see why yeah, know, that would catch I'm, you I'm like anticipating that. the movie that's going to release soon. You know, I got mixed emotions on it just because, you know, Legend shouldn't be played or touched. But, mm -hmm. you know, I love her. So I'm definitely going to be there as soon as it comes into a theater near me. <laughs> yeah, listen, I hope y'all get it right. Y'all better get it right. Yeah, okay, please it, get it right. Please get it right because I'm going to yeah. be so sad. Yeah. If you don't. <laughs> you got to get it right. So second, Brent Fayez. Oh, my boy, Brent. So if they're <laughs> visually, right, if there was like a percentile bracket of people who love Brent, would you say you top 10%? I would say maybe two, three years ago I was. Okay. Right now I'm... Mm. Uh, Sorry, my guy. <laughs> that last album wasn't doing it. For I was gonna me. ask you about that. Is you yeah, all feeling it? I it made me become not much of a fan of that. Mm. It sucks because that was my guy, you know. But um, yeah, I'm I'm not. I did not like his last album at all. At all, no song. Maybe one, but I don't even remember. That's how bad it was. And you, not the one with Coco. Jones. Out of all people, know how much yeah. I was like obsessed with him at one yeah. point. But again. I tune into something and I like hold on to it and then I let it go and I'm like obsessed with something else, you know? Mm. So Brent right now is like, I wouldn't say I'm a fan. Oh, man. I oh, know. Brent. We got, we got a, Brent, we got to <laughs> reel it back me. in. We got to reel it back you in, Brent. You lost me. <laughs> Word. Well, one last question for you before we really get up out of here. What's something or an aspect of your life that you just personally value as a luxury? Mm, um, I think love, you know, I love moving with love. I love mm. moving with intention. So surrounding myself around people that I love, surrounding myself around people that believe in me, that I believe in. Um, I think it's a luxury to say that, you know, you have people that like genuinely love you and want to talk about your well-being, want to talk about just like things that mean mm -hmm. something to you. So I think just moving in life, like with intention and with love is is just the highest luxury for me. I love I love that. Mm -hmm. I love that. It's a great answer. <laughs> Word. So I mean is there anything else you want to leave the people with? Any exciting projects coming up? Um I I do have an art show coming up. It's gonna be sometime late February, early March. Probably early March. Okay. Um, and I don't want to give away too much, but okay, I've yeah, never yeah. like showcased this type of art, um, so I'm excited for it. Uh, and just continue to grow my career in art. It's what's been moving me since day one. Mm. And uh, yeah, I also in the works of actually working with a gallery. So I'm really, really excited to see where my like career is going to go this year because. It's just off to a great start, you know. I've already been knocking on a lot of doors, and a lot of doors have been opening. So just like, watch, you know. I love it. I love <laughs> it. Well, congratulations on everything. I look forward to seeing everything that's to come. 
Um, and just thank you for coming through to, to the show and chopping up with me. Absolutely. Much love to you. Can't wait to see where everything goes for you. You know, I'm always a big fan, as I say, of intention. And I've always been like, man, D, you got it in you, my guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so I love to see everything that you're doing. Hard supporter. And uh, yeah, congrats yeah. to you, man. Thank you. I appreciate that, really. I really appreciate that. So, well, there you have it. That's another episode of The Sport of Luxury. And I'll see you on the next one.